Hey guys, we're being well today. So yeah, this is my final video for 2021. I mean, what a year it's been. Obviously, we've gone through a lot um, as a community, to say the least. But uh, for everyone, obviously, who has subscribed towards this channel, Ruppy Itch, uh, a massive shout out to you guys. I mean, you guys are the best, really. Um, you really just make my day, obviously, when I'm, you know, making these videos and seeing you guys comment every every single video is just you know it's, it's very yeah, greatly appreciated so obviously thank you obviously towards that you know towards the friends and family who obviously have you know supported me while doing this yeah just a massive thanks obviously towards you guys as well but uh but yeah no uh for this last video obviously i will be doing a tier list uh for for the top 20 rugby nations for 2021 so essentially i'm going to be doing kind of like a a ranking this at least of who I think probably have the best year in my opinion obviously this is my opinion by the way I'm not going off world rugby rankings to say the least but um, I just think I'm gonna go off you know kind of memorable moments I'd say throughout this world throughout this year but also just who who in my opinion I think just stood out um, you know massively I'd say throughout this whole calendar year the at least but yeah let's just get straight into it so of course uh, you can see obviously there's a order towards this uh, tier list as you can see there's um banger which is the uh, top tier obviously you do have the likes of very solid as the second tier of uh, the third tier you do you know you did the job you know pretty average say at least so did the job uh for the fourth tier we have a stinker you know a stinker for the year and then of course the last one we do have l so yeah no team obviously wants to get into l but you never know one team may have to come into that category category with we'll wait and see but anyway, we're, we're going to start off, obviously, with Ireland here. So, Ireland... Oof, where would I put Ireland? Um, i say Ireland probably had a... I think they did... The, see, I, wanna, I, I think they're between very solid and did the job. But for the purposes of this order, I think I'm going to put them at... Um, they had a good year, Ireland, to be, to be fair to them. They, they came, what, third in the... In the uh, the ranking, I think it was like fourth maybe, but uh, it was a third. Yeah, they came third in the rankings for Six Nations. Had a few players obviously within Lions Tour. Did well obviously within the Autumn Nations. So you know what? I'm gonna say very solid year for for Ireland. I'm not gonna say they had a banger of a year, but solid. I might change that after, but we'll wait and see. But further now, I'll put on very solid. So obviously for the next one, we'll go on to um, Argentina. So yeah, Argentina. They didn't have um, the best of years, to be perfectly honest. Um, obviously, they've had kind of a better... I'd say that they had a massive year last year, obviously, within the Rugby Championship, you know, beating the uh, the All Blacks within 2020. Uh, so that was a massive win for them. And obviously, I think they also drew against the Wallabies twice, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, overall, they had a very good year um, within 2020. But for 2021... I wouldn't say it was their best year, to be honest. You know, within, you know, the Ruppy Nations, uh, Ruppy Championship, of course, they did finish last, um, which obviously is not, um, you know, a good sign, obviously, for them. And obviously, within the Ruppy, within the, you know, Automations as well, they didn't have the, they only, I think, won one out of their three games or four games, if I'm not mistaken. Like, I mean, I did watch that game actually against uh, France. That was probably one of the best games I think I've seen them play throughout the whole year, even though they lost that game. You know, it showed, a, you know, they had a lot of heart, you could say, within that game. And Buffelli was just crazy. But, um,. But yeah, I think Argentina, I'm probably going to say, because it just wasn't, I'll, I'm going to be completely honest, guys, um, because it wasn't the be their best year, I'm actually going to say that they had a stinker. <laughs> and um, obviously, stinker is probably the, the, not the right term to use within that category, but I just don't think they did the job because it just wasn't on par. Like I think last year, they probably had, I don't know, a very solid between banger year. This year was like, did the job, but stinker. So... I'll put them at the top of stinker for now, I think. But um, anyway, we'll move on, obviously, towards the uh, the second one, uh, the third one, actually, sorry, uh, which is Georgia in this list. So, yeah, maybe, that's interesting to say the least with Georgia. Obviously, you know, Georgia are playing uh, within the, I believe, the European Cup. If I'm, if I, I think that's what it's called, the European Cup. But obviously, that is for the World Cup qualification, guys. And, yeah, that is kind of a big thing to say the least um, for them. But... I think at the moment, if I'm not mistaken, they're they're top of the table at the moment with uh, 24 points. So you know they're in a decent, obviously, um, you know they're in a decent amount of points, obviously, to get towards uh, qualification, obviously, for the Rugby World Cup. If I do believe they'll come up on top, because I mean, you know, next down to them is like you know 14 points at least. So yeah, they're in a very comfortable position, I'd say, um, Georgia. So yeah, I think to be credit to Georgia, I think they did it. They've had a good year, the at least. So I think I'm gonna say. I'd say did the job. I think did the job is probably a good way to put um, Georgia in. So, yeah, I think Georgia will go to the top of did the job. Um, for the next one, obviously, we do the likes of France. And, yeah, France right here. I mean, yeah, I really think there's only one category for them this year. And a lot of people might be surprised about this because if you look at it, like, within the Six Nations, you know, they, they finished second, obviously, uh, behind Wales. And if you look at it from, you know, the Australian point of view, obviously, they did lose the Australian test. But you have to... Re you have to re 
remind yourself that that test was their second team and they they only lost 2-1 so it 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 shows me good signs of kind of a progression this at least for them and obviously within the United nations they were just outstanding this at least so i think for that reason and obviously i think the pimp the you know the kind of the uh, the best result i think out of all 2021 really was the one win against wales i'd say uh, and that was just a massive win within the Six Nations, but also the what obviously the most recent one against uh, New Zealand. I mean that was just a great win, to say the least. So yeah, I think France for me has to go into uh, the banger category. So yeah, they're the first team within banger. But um, moving on, of course, we do have the likes of Fiji. Fiji again, I wouldn't say this is probably their best year. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I mean they add a few games. Obviously, not as many, uh, not as many compared to a lot of these teams. But I think the first time they played. And I could be wrong here, by the way. Um, the first time I remember them playing, obviously, was within the June Internationals, obviously against uh, New Zealand at the point in time. And I was actually very impressed with them uh, during that period, this at least. You know, they were pretty impressive overall. But I think they kind of dropped a, dropped a bit down in form, um, this at least, obviously, coming in towards the, the Autumn Nations. I mean, they, they didn't do... Yeah, they didn't do you know extremely well this at least. I mean they they got some good in good you know score lines said at least against you know Wales. I mean the Welsh game was a great game to watch. If you saw Wales Fiji by the way, must watch game. That was a great game to watch. And Fiji really you know kind of stood out with their you know kind of uh, offloading kind of rugby, which all you know we all uh, all love and dear. So um, yeah, I think for this year I I wouldn't say they had like an L, but maybe uh, it did the job year. Hmm. You know, what, I'm gonna put Fiji and did the job. I think that they, they, they had a, a good year, and obviously they obviously have qualified for uh, the World Cup as well. So um, yeah, I'll say did the job obviously towards them, and I'll put them at second. Uh, I think I don't think they go ahead of um, Georgia in my in my my ranking. But um, anyway, moving on, we do have the likes of England next. Um, England, oh gosh, I mean, what to say about England? Um, to be honest, I'm gonna be very um, you know, very um, honest here. I think England have one of their worst performances you could say within the six nations obviously you know coming fifth fifth out of you know out of the six which is obviously not a good position where you, no one wants to see obviously england that you know they did lose it they lost to scotland at home in the opening match and that, that was just a, a shock to say the least uh, to be perfectly honest but um i think england have kind of capitalized that um you know if you go from like you know the the lions tour obviously you know they, a lot of players obviously selected for that tour so you know that's obviously a good sign for them obviously with the progression they've had you know developing a lot of players in recent times, and also going into the Autumn Nations, they were just outstanding. I, I believe they had a 3 0 record, if I'm not mistaken, obviously. And I actually went to the game uh, between England and Springbok. So, yeah, I was really impressed by them, uh, you know, their performance up there. So, in my opinion, I wouldn't say they had a banger of a year um, just because, because of, you know, their ranking, obviously, within Six Nations. Um, it's For me, it's between very solid and did the job. But. See, a lot of people might be surprised with this, but I'm actually going to put England at the top of did the job. I, I, I just can't let that fifth position... Even though they, they did well at the end of it, that fifth is just... That's not where you want England to be. So, for that reason, I'm going to be very harsh here. Maybe too harsh, to say the least, but I'm going to put England at the top of did the job. But anyway, moving on, of course, we do the likes of Japan. Um... Japan have had a, a decent year this at least. I mean, I'm not going to say the best of year, um, best of years, but um, also for the performances they've had, similar to Fiji, not as many games compared to other teams. But you know, they have done pretty well. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, they've played against you know the likes of you know they actually put the Lions actually uh, within uh, the June and all, uh, June international period and all of that, and they were you know, pretty good, decent round there. Obviously, they played Australia as well. Uh, both those games, obviously, they did lose in fact, but um, still, you know, put up decent performances within both, in my opinion. Um, and obviously towards the, um, you know, the Autumn Nations period of time, you know, Japan was, yeah, they really got <laughs> wrecked, the set of least, um, you know, particularly by Ireland. I mean, that Ireland defeat was just oof, a demolishing the set of least. So, yeah, for me, um, I normally would put, I think, again, it just comes down to, like, I put Fiji, I believe, yeah, Mm, did the, uh, I just don't know what I, I think I'm gonna actually I'm actually gonna put Japan in the stinker category. <laughs> I'll, I'll put them. Did they do better than Argentina? Um. Uh, no, I'll, I'll put them second within the stinker. I think that's what I'm gonna do. But uh, anyway, moving on towards Romania. Interesting um, uh, to talk about with Romania. Obviously, part of the uh, the European competition of, of, as well. Obviously, for the uh, for the Europe rugby uh, rugby championship. Um, 
for the Europe Championship. And I do believe they're second, if I'm not mistaken, actually, within that one. They're, they have 14 points at the moment. So they're in a very good position, actually, to qualify as the second team. So Europe 2. And I believe Europe 2 would actually fit within Safka's group with Scotland and Ireland. So... Yeah, that'd be a very you know, good group, obviously, to get in. Probably with a group of death, in my opinion. But uh, to say the least, Romania have done pretty well so far. Obviously, they have kind of um, got uh, wins, I believe, over Portugal and Spain. So um, that was obviously big, big wins for them within that qualifying process. But also, there is still more games to go. But for the meantime, I think Romania has done very well. So for that reason, I would say Romania... Mm, I would say Romania is probably the top of... Uh, am, I, am I being harsh here? You know what? Actually, before I even do that, I'm going to move Fiji down to Stinker. Just because I think Fiji just haven't had enough games to really do it. Maybe they are already at Stinker. Uh, yeah, I'll put them at Stinker. I'll put them at Stinker. But um, I will. I actually will put Romania at Did the Job. I think they, they're on par with what you know, kind of um, Georgia's done, obviously, within this year. They've had a good year, Romania. So for that reason, I'll put them there. Um, but, um, but obviously at the end of the list, uh, for the moment, but, um, of course, moving on towards the Wallabies. Wow. The Wallabies. I mean, this, I'll, I'll be honest, guys, the, the Wallabies had a very good year this year. I mean, a lot of people might be surprised maybe to hear that. Uh, hopefully you're not surprised, but, um, they've had a very good year. And if you look at it in terms of, you could say like super rugby, um, obviously not in counting international, but super rugby. Yeah. A lot of their teams just didn't perform at the level of what you would expect, obviously, within those competitions. But from an international standpoint, they were just outstanding. I mean, particularly that, that I think the best series, um, I think, this year was Australia-France. Like, hands down, that was the best series I think I've seen this year. I mean, even better than the Lions Tour. I mean, I'll be perfectly honest. That series was actually better than the Lions Tour. It was so good to watch. If you watch any of the, uh, trust me, those three games, you could watch back, and they were just Nail biters. It was just such it was such entertaining um, rugby to watch. So and, it, and obviously Australia did win that one. Obviously against uh, France. And then obviously going into the you know the autumn nations, they didn't do as well as you would expect. Obviously they did lose actually against what Scotland and they lost to Scotland and Wales. But I believe they won one of the, did they win one of their games? I forgot. Um, actually, I actually can't think. Did they win one of their games? Uh, I, don't, I actually don't think they did, but, um, ooh, mm, I was actually going to put Australia in the banger category, but, uh, the thing is that, like, mm, you know what, I'll put Australia at the top of very solid, I think that's what I'm going to do for now. I might change at the end, we'll have to wait and see, but uh, Wallabies can go on the, uh, the top of very solid, I think, yeah, I think that's pretty fair, that's at least. But um, anyway, moving on, moving on, of course, towards Samoa. Again, similar to Fiji, just not enough game time, to say the least. Um, but obviously, a good thing for them is that they've actually qualified already for the Rugby World Cup. So, yeah, they obviously beat Tonga within that quali uh, qualification. And they've actually placed themselves within Group D, I believe, uh, which is with uh, England, Japan, and Argentina. So that should be a good group, obviously, for Samoa. They should be pleased, actually, they got that group because... Um, that's probably the better group to actually get in uh, between the Oceanas. But, um, yeah, you know, I think Samoa have done pretty well this year. Uh, obviously, they played into New Zealand. I mean, that was just a horrendous performance, to say the least. But since then, they've done pretty well. So, for that reason, I actually say um, I did the job for them. I think they, you know, they, they've already qualified. I think that's probably a, that's a good achievement for them. So, I'll say did um, did the job. But anyway, moving on towards uh, Tonga. Tonga is similar, similar, similar situation once again towards these uh, Fiji and Samoa. Um, again, they did lose that game against Samoa. So I, I think this is a pretty easy one to say. I'm going to put them as stinker, just um, shirt like that. Obviously, they did, they did play against the All Blacks as well. And yeah, not the best of performances, at least, once again. So yeah, for that reason, I have to say Tonga. Yeah, actually, no. now that I think about it, Tonga was actually the team that got smacked, not Samoa. But um, yeah, so for that reason, Tonga, I think... Oh, I mean, it, it could be... Would they be an L? Mm. Is that too harsh to put Tonga at L? Mm. You know what? For the meantime, I'm actually going to put Tonga in L. <laughs> that might be a really harsh, guys, but I think it's the right call. So for that reason, I'll put Tonga at L. But um, anyway, moving on towards Wales. Of course, Wales have had a great year, in my opinion, obviously. Kind of uh, writing off a lot of... you know. A lot of people doubted Wales, I'd say, up to this, you know, 
uh, towards the 2021 Six Nations. You know, obviously they were a bit behind, you could say, within 2020. So it's kind of expected to say at least that people had doubts, including myself, by the way. But um, yeah, they just, they just, they kind of uh, surprised everyone. I'm not gonna say surprised because obviously they, you know, you know they have that in their um, in their arsenal. But um, yeah, they're, they're just fantastic, at least. And obviously, they came first from the Six Nations, so yeah, obviously that's a big achievement, obviously for them. Unfortunately, they didn't get the Grand Slam, obviously due to France's um, heroics in the in what in the 85th minute, I believe it was, like how long, how, however long that game went for. But um, yeah, I think I'm gonna probably say Wales deserve a very solid. I think they probably, I mean, even within the Autumn Nations as well, they're they're really good, obviously against um, Australia. But they did obviously do, they did lose to. Um, New Zealand and South Africa so I think for that reason I think very solid is probably a good place to put them um do I put them ahead of the Wallabies that's the question um you know what I'm gonna put the Welsh actually ahead of the Wallabies but then very solid I think that's probably a, a suitable place to put them um but here we go uh for the next one obviously of course we do have the All Blacks um yeah the All Blacks oh well I mean They've had a good. They've actually played a lot of games this year, um, said the least. Obviously, um, they've actually played you know since what the June. You know, they played against what uh, Tonga and Fiji, Fiji twice, I believe. They played uh, you know, obviously the U.S. as well. Uh, well. Actually, no, they played the Rugby Championship first. Sorry, and then they played the U.S. Obviously, they did win the Rugby Championship, but they lost to Safka in in that process. But did very well against the others as well. So you know, obviously a good, a good you could say competition for them. Um, did play the U.S. and just ripped them a new one, at least. Uh, went over 100 points, I believe, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, yeah, was, <laughs> that's a, a wall being this, at least. And, yeah, within the Autumn Nations as well, obviously, big wins over... Um, the big win was really over uh, Wales, but then obviously, you know, beating Italy is you know, kind of expected. But then, yeah, the loss against France wasn't a, kind of a... Yeah, it, it kind of finished it on a sour note, I'd say, this year. So, for that reason, I'm actually going to put them in very solid... Um, but the top are very solid in my opinion because yeah they they had a good year still they had a very good year, but uh, moving on of course we do the likes of uh, Spain and yes yeah, Spain uh, if you guys don't know they've actually done very well recently actually coming up the rankings obviously beating Netherlands and Russia which is expected again and obviously within the European Championship but they have lost to um you know they have lost to um, Portugal and Georgia so and Romania I think so. Yeah, it's not the best performances. But they have actually picked up bonus points within them. So that's why they're still in competition at the moment. So you never know. They could actually make it. But um, I think um, I'll put them in probably Stinker for now. But I'd probably at the top end of Stinker. Um, other side, you know, I'll put them there, I think. But um, yeah, I think that's probably the best place to put them. Um, and then, yeah. No, I think... Um, yeah, we'll move on. We'll move on. For Uruguay, of course, Uruguay was pretty good, to say the least. Um, Uruguay, obviously, were very impressive. Um, obviously, going off um, what they've done, you know, throughout the year. Obviously, qualifying, and they beat the U.S., which obviously, that was kind of the standout result, to say the least, for Uruguay. Um, you know, beating them in both aggregates, I believe. It was like 50, what, 30, I think it was. So, yeah, they, were, they, they did very well, because they actually lost the first one, if I'm not mistaken, against the U.S., but they actually came back from the second, so... Yeah, fair play to the Uruguay. Um, yeah, they have a, they've had a good year. And obviously, I, w I want them to do well, obviously, coming back from that. You know, you could say very... <laughs> um, you know, I'm not going to say... Yeah, you could say a surprising win. Um, but that big win over Fiji within the World Cup last year was a good one for them. So, yeah, hopefully they can kind of continue that me momentum within the next World Cup. But, um, but yeah, overall, um, Uruguay, I think, they deser deserve... I think uh, probably it did the job. I'll put them in did the job category. Yeah. Uh, moving on to, uh, to Portugal, to say the least. Of course, Portugal, um, yeah, not the best year, to be perfectly honest. Uh, obviously, they have fin they are in par, actually, with uh, Romania at the moment. So, um, I think I have to put them at this... See, I want to put them in the did-the-job category, but I just don't think they'll prevail. Yeah, that, might, might be, that might be very harsh, but I'm actually going to put them at the top of Stinker, just because I think... Uh, they they kind of deserved it the job, but I just don't think they're at that level. So I think Stinker is probably where they should go. Uh, but anyway, moving on towards the Springboks. I mean, this is I think an easy decision to set at least uh, before what the year they've had. You know, obviously winning the Lions Tour and then yeah, within this you know within the automation as well, only losing to England but beating Wales and Scotland away. So yeah, they've had a good year to set at least. Um, so for that reason, I think I'm putting them in banger. Um, I would say it's n mm, is it better than France? I think France have, 
I think they've had the best year in the Springboks. I, I really do think the Springboks have had the best year. I think it's, it, it, it's kind of underrated, obviously, just due to like what's happened, obviously, with the virus and everything going on. But I think the Springboks have had the best year. So I'm going to put them ahead of France, actually, within that category. But uh, anyway, moving on towards Scotland, of course, uh, for Scotland, you know, you do have the likes of, you know, they've done actually very well this year. Like I said beforehand, you know, they beat the English um, in Twickenham for the first time in over, what, like 50 years or whatever. So that's, a, you know, I think it was over 30 years or something like that. It was an amazing achievement. But um, yeah, they, they had a good Six Nations, obviously coming fourth, but tied, you know, third, uh, tied fourth, I said at least. But um, yeah, still overall, uh, overall, they did pretty well. Uh, even within the uh, Lions selection, you know, they got a lot. I think it was like the most ever selected Scottish players from the Lions. So yeah, well done, well done, obviously towards Scotland in that front, and obviously t- going on towards the autumn autumn nations. Um, they did lose to um Safka, uh, which is obviously unfortunate to say the least. But they do they did actually beat um Australia, which was a big win for them. And I believe they did they did they win their other game. I believe it was against who was it against their their last game. Was it Japan? I think, might, I think it was Japan. Yeah, they beat the Japan, uh, Japanese actually pretty well. So, um, yeah. For that reason, I think they had a, probably a did the job year. I, I wouldn't say very solid, but I think they're prob- in my opinion, they're probably at the top of did the job. So, yeah, I'm going to put them at the top of did the job. Uh, the U.S., yeah, not the best year. Probably, um, this is probably the easiest decision I think I have out of everyone. Um, they're going straight to L. I mean, they... They got not. They got knocked out uh, of the. You know, kind of. They lost obviously towards Uruguay as well, uh, within that qualification process. Obviously, they still have a chance to get into the um, uh, chance. Obviously, through the Repahage uh, tournament qualification, uh, the qualifier winner, the at least. But yeah, to lose against uh, Uruguay was obviously a big loss for them. So, I think that yeah, and then obviously they had that massive loss against the All Blacks, which is obviously expected. But still, just not. Just inflicts more, and you know, just yeah, you know, it hurts even more. You could say. But uh, they, they, overall, I mean, I, I'll put just a bit of a positive for them. Um, the way that they actually hosted the uh, that game for the All Blacks, I, I was very impressed by that. And even like Marcus Vieira was saying that actually that's how you know rugby should be kind of um, uh, done for future events. So I mean, in that front, you know, the USA did, did pretty well. So maybe put them in a stinker, but <laughs> but no, no. I think overall they had they had an L of a year. So um, yeah, I'm gonna put them at probably the bottom of that of elves so, yeah that's where i'm putting them but anyway the last team obviously for this um it, we have italy italy i think have had a decent year i'm not going to say the best year to say the least but um yeah lo- you know obviously they did they did come six within the six nations which i'm not going to say is predictable but um it's under it's you, you can see that it's going to happen to say the least but um but yeah again obviously towards the um automations as well they did lose their games all their all three of their games i believe so yeah, but um, yeah, not the best performances overall. But they have um, kind of sparked kind of an uprising, you could say, in player development. I'd say this year. So I've been very impressed by you know the likes of uh, Garbisi, you know uh, Stefan Varney. You know they have a lot of players who have actually done well this year. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of more. Uh, Riccone, um they've had um, Monte Ioni. Um, he he's done very well this year. But um, they have another. Uh, they have another guy I really like, but um, Baresi, I believe. But um, but yeah, overall, I think they they're doing well in developing a few players. But um, I think just for the meantime, I'm gonna put them in stinker. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's kind of it, really, guys. Just uh, again, just want to say, guys, just a massive thank you, obviously, towards everyone. Hope you had a great year. I mean, this has been just a fantastic year for uh, to say the least for myself. Obviously, from a YouTube point of view, um, you know, I I really have appreciated you guys. You know, just. Yeah, it, it it does really mean a lot that you guys obviously enjoy the content and and I you know I love to see obviously you guys commenting below so that's uh, great but um yeah no hopefully we can obviously do more videos next year we'll obviously see how busy I am but uh, yeah no looking forward obviously towards uh, Super Rugby the at least and you know Six Nations and yeah you know, all the you know, other competitions as well but uh, but yeah no it's been a good year it's been a good year uh, I think the last thing I'll say is probably if I had to say what was my favorite video to film this year. Um, I would probably say it, it, it was actually the Wales victory. Um, it was no, sorry, it was France's victory over the Wales. If you if you go back and watch that video, that's probably my favorite video that I filmed because I was just oh, I was a stack when that actually happened. I was like, oh my gosh, this this actually happened. But um, no, that was a great video to film. But um, but overall, just obviously uh, you know with the clams this year as well, you know uh, particularly with the uh, the Kiwi lads, you know it's been all all good and all. So uh, hopefully we'll obviously continue that as well but um yeah overall just want to say um like i said thank you guys so much this has really just been a, a great year for me and yeah hopefully uh, we do many more in the future but guys 
like this video, subscribe, subscribe right now, guys, just would mean a lot, so obviously my goal is really to get to a to 1k, that's really, what I'm, that's my goal, really, so if I can get to 1k, I mean, I'm just gonna be, that's, oof, that's the, that's the goal right there, so yeah, let's hopefully, let's, let's, let's try to reach that, so at least, but, um, anyway, just to hope you guys have a good day, and yeah, happy new year, everyone.